ever heard the expression, I'm a Christian because I'm Catholic, or I'm a Christian because I've been water baptized? There are so many phrases that have been used down through the years that have ex has expressed a certain position or claim to Christ only to find that these professions had no real indication that the person was a Christian at all. We're not Christian because of some denominational claim. We're not Christian just because we've been baptized in water or, or because we participated in some sacrament or some religious service. You see, water, uh, considering baptism, water baptism itself doesn't save the soul, neither does membership in a popular church or even observing the Lord's Supper. And I'm not downplaying those things because they are significant in the church. What I'm saying is many believe in works salvation, that that's what's saving them. Many believe because they've kept the golden rule or have treated people right or have participated in some religious service that God is somehow going to give them an inheritance into His glory because of what they have done. But this is a gross misunderstanding today in the world. Uh, Paul tells us in Romans 3 that no one is justified by the works of the law. He puts it as plain as he can. Uh, Ephesians 2.8, For by grace we are saved through faith, that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Then he says, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, we have to address this because there are so many that have been, to, been deceived into thinking and believing that as long as I have participated in mass or I've participated in church, uh, some religious service, that somehow I'm a candidate of Christianity because I, I'm treating people right and doing right. But we must understand to take part or to share in a Christian service doesn't assure salvation for anyone. Now, let me back up just for a moment. If when a person is speaking, he's speaking of the word Catholic as a reference to the universal body of true believers as they were called in early church history, then it's likely they are referring to real Christianity. But let me make this clear. If a person is speaking of Catholicism, which is the system, the practice, and the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church, then that is a very different term and doesn't refer to Christianity at all. The same example is found in those making claim to Christianity that have been water baptized. If a person is using the word baptized as a reference to um, him or her being obedient to the faith and their life has been changed by Christ and they're just fulfilling the biblical mandate to be baptized, then it is likely they are referring to real Christianity as well. But if a person is claiming that water baptism saved him or the sacraments saved him because he participated and there is no evidence of the Spirit's fruit in their life that they have been born again, then once again, it's a profession and it's not a reality. I am amazed at the lack of understanding that many evangelicals have and I'm talking about year after year after year of, of claiming to be saved, and even professional people um, that you hear on television, that they lay claim to certain identities and professions that they really don't know anything about. And an example of that would be how many people do we have in politics that um, they get into a discussion about treating people right and treating people without partiality and um, treating people fairly. And they make statements like, and I quote this one that many quote a lot, we are all God's children. Now, is this phrase correct? No, it's not. This is not the right phrase. 
We all are created in the image of God, yes, but we are not all God's children. You see, phrases and expressions become the norm for some people, but their definition of those words may be completely different from what the words actually mean. You may be speaking of salvation by grace, um, through faith alone, in Christ alone, by the word of God alone, and, and to another professing believer who is readily agreeing to what you're saying. But the more you talk and the more you explain, in a short time you realize they don't understand at all what you're saying. And this is why it is so important when we are in conversation with others that we are to be on the same page, referring to the same ideas and the same meaning because a statement can be made with several views in mind if not made clear. So having said that, this is my point, we must understand that when we make a claim or profession to Christ, we must bring about clarity so as not to imply the wrong idea or the incorrect thought. Now, this is not to say that we haven't been misunderstood or, or said something incorrectly or even in the wrong way. Of course we have. We have had to retract many times and say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. But we must strive to set a clear and precise message when we are declaring to the world that we are Christians and to be clear on what it means to be a Christian. You might say, well, is it really that important? Is it your business to correct it? It seems like you're going too far. Well, you better believe it is. Just as an earthly judge has to be given the facts and understand the whole story before he can come to the right judgment, so God has given to, given, um, to every minister the Word of God with its right and authority to evaluate and exact spiritual matters. So if the truth is not being proclaimed or understood, the error must be exposed and the truth revealed. We must defend the faith, which is what the Apostle Paul and the other apostles did, as we see recorded in the Bible. It's the shepherd's responsibility. That's what we must make clear. To make sure the sheep are safe from danger and harm. It's my business and it's every minister's business to defend the faith that has been so graciously given. You see, if men and women are implying they know the God of the Bible and they're speaking for him um, because some, somewhere they have an affiliation with some church and have participated in, in that church and then they go out into the world and they bear evil fruit and they tarnish the name of Christ, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to defend the faith and say that kind of life doesn't represent Christ. And if it doesn't represent Christ, it isn't Christianity. All right, so what does the Bible say about how salvation comes and how a person is saved? And through and by whom is he or she brought to Christ? Is it by works, what I do, or by God's mercy, what he does? Is it a monergistic work or a synergistic work? Well, the Bible says, it tells us this, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing the word of God. We are saved by hearing the truth from God's word. Um, 1 Peter chapter 1, the Bible says we are born again by the word of God. Most people don't know that's in there. Ephesians 2.8, For by grace you are saved through faith. And so we are saved by faith in Christ. 2 Thessalonians 2.13, God's people have from the beginning been chosen to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. It's very clear. Titus 2.11, it was God's grace that brought salvation. Titus 3, verse 5 through 7. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. It's clear. But according to His mercy, He saved us. 
by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Spirit, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Friends, if we are Christian, we are Christian because we have been saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, by the word of God alone, for his glory alone. Not because we belong to anything or have done anything. Not because of our own merits, but by God's mercy and his grace, he saved us. It's a monergistic work. So the claim we make shouldn't be, I'm a Christian because I'm Catholic, or I'm a Christian because I've been baptized in water, or I'm a Christian because I said the sinner's prayer, or I'm a Christian because I've kept the golden rule, and we could go on and on. The claim should be, I'm a Christian because of God's grace. And as a result of that grace, through God's mercy, He is Lord of my life.